several small fires burning in Bear Creek Lake Park. But exactly where did they start and who or what started them? The answers to those questions coming from these investigators in training who were looking into the cause and the origin of those fires. The details on what they're learning here and more coming up in this West Metro update. Jeff, call 911. What is the address of the emergency? More than 5,000 wildfires ignite in Colorado each year, and the majority of the fires are human-caused. But often the origin point and exact ignition source are unknown. One reason, there are very few certified wildland fire investigators. Yep, so we've got our angle of char right and a protected and zone. These investigators in training are taking what they learned in the classroom and putting it to work in the field, looking for the smallest clues inside the blackened perimeter of a potential crime scene. That is interesting. That's what that is. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to separate the weeds and the, and the leaves and everything else that's in there that should normally be in there and look for something like a match or a match head or a cigarette or a cigarette butt, something that should not be in the middle of this burned area. Fire investigation involves a complex and methodical process. While any fire can be caused by a variety of factors, it's vitally important for investigators to have the knowledge, skills, and abilities to accurately determine the origin and cause. At 10.30 a.m., winds are one to three miles per hour. Gusts are at five miles per hour. For the crews that provided the fresh evidence for the investigators, another training opportunity, a prescribed burn on 30 acres just south of Bear Creek Reservoir. Firefighters from 10 agencies, including West Metro, burned 10 acres each day over three days. Real hands-on experience for the crews that helps the park's ecosystem by getting rid of invasive species, giving native plants and grasses a chance to thrive. Additional units on a wildland interface fire south of Highway 83 and Highway 86. West Metro covers areas of both Jefferson and Douglas County, and this exercise put West Metro firefighters in Franktown for a wildland urban interface drill. The scenario, a fire pushed by strong winds into nearby neighborhoods. Repeat address. Training with other fire agencies is extremely valuable because firefighters could assist on incidents in other districts. The training gives everyone insight into specific agency equipment, capabilities, and tactics. Across the district, West Metro averages close to 40,000 calls a year, and most of those calls are medical emergencies. And that's why we put a new ambulance or medic into service. Medic 17, unconscious or near fainting. This is West Metro's newest medic unit or ambulance, Medic 17. We are an all hazards uh, emergency response fire district, um, which means that we respond to all kinds of emergencies. However, almost 70% of our calls are EMS or medical related. We continue to see increased population density in our district. Uh, along with increased population, our district is aging. With that comes an increase in calls, uh, 911 calls for service. So our uh, existing medic units are becoming busier and busier. And so we determined that it was necessary to add another medic unit so that we can be more responsive to the community. Um, this allows us to uh, not only balance the call volume we have among all of our medic units, um, but be able to respond more quickly to the area closest to the station. So obviously as an ambulance, their primary responsibility are medical calls. Additionally, they respond to all hazards. So if there's a structure fire, they'll respond with the engine to support the engine, either in fire suppression or as a medical unit. And they can respond to hazardous materials calls, technical rescue, or in Station 17's area, we have Clear Creek nearby. So this station also specializes in swift water rescue. We'll look at heat maps, 
kind of where the majority of our calls are concentrated, um, where our existing units are located, um, how busy are each of those units, and uh, also when are calls occurring during the day. So we evaluate all of that so that we can really position our apparatus where they're most effective. Our job is to be as responsive as possible to the community that we serve. Where should we position these so that when someone dials 911 and they have an expe expectation that will respond quickly, that we're able to deliver on that expectation. Along with Medic 17, Station 17 is also home to Engine 17, Brush 17, and our Swift Water Rescue Team, one of West Metro's special teams. Another special team is the West Metro Dive Team, here training in Bear Creek Lake Park. West Metro is also a member of the Metro Dive Team, with crews from South Metro Fire, Westminster Fire, and Thornton Fire. In this training, Bear Creek Park Rangers also taking part in a scenario where a boat had capsized with several people in the water. Man, the one went down, the other one was swimming towards me, and I thought he was good, but he just went so down. We've got one that went down out of ways, right where the boat, and one that's uh, about 100 feet offshore. Diving in Colorado is not the same as diving around beach resorts. Visibility may just be a few inches, and the water is full of debris from vegetation and the muck that settles on the bottom of the lake. Searching for victims in these conditions could mean targeting with sonar if possible, and then using sense of touch to find the person that went overboard. Imagine this, waking up on a Sunday morning to a strange popping sound. That's how a Lakewood family found out that there was a fire in their garage. Ranger 2 is on scene of a single story residential structure. We do have a working fire. The fire was most likely started by smoking materials. Mom, dad, baby, and two dogs were home at the time, and they escaped without injury. There was heavy damage in the garage and some smoke damage throughout the home. Firefighters contained the fire to the garage, and the spread was also limited by a closed door separating the garage from the home. You can see the significant damage on one side of the door and little damage on the other side. This motorhome caught fire when the owner was refueling a generator. Some fuel spilled, and when the generator started up, it backfired and ignited the fuel. This happened at the Soda Lakes Lodge near Bear Creek Lake Park. Responding crews could see smoke and flames from more than a mile and a half away. The motorhome was a total loss. Two other RVs had heat exposure damage. No one was injured. A very unusual cause for this one acre wildfire in Waterton Canyon. Rodents chewing on wires in an electrical box shorted out the system, causing arcing and sparking, which ignited the dry grass. West Metro and South Metro crews were able to quickly slow the fire's progress, building a hose line to get water up the steep and rugged slope from the engine to the fire, while digging a fire line around the perimeter. No structures were threatened. In September, we remembered and honored Dan Moran, a West Metro firefighter paramedic. Dan E. Moran, local 1309, West Metro, Colorado. Dan's name was one of 469 names placed on the International Association of Firefighters Memorial in Colorado Springs this year. Dan served our district for 18 years. We lost him to job-related cancer in February of 2020. Dan's wife and daughters were presented with an International Association of Firefighters flag, as were the families of all firefighters who gave the ultimate sacrifice in service to their communities. Our firefighters know that they can't always predict what the day is going to bring, but some calls are more unusual than others. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, in this case, a bear sitting in a tree in the middle of a neighborhood. West Metro Tower 2 and Truck 14 responding to assist Colorado Parks and Wildlife. The bear had been hanging out in the neighborhood since the night before, and everyone was hoping he'd move on, but he seemed to like it right where he was. Firefighters first attempted to move into place to get a harness around the bear to lower him to the ground after he was tranquilized, but he was hiding behind thick branches and there was no way to get to him. 
Tower 2 provided a platform so wildlife officers could get up and reach the bear to shoot tranquilizer darts, waiting until he fell asleep. Perfect. Wildlife officers say the bear appeared to be about six to eight years old, weighing around 150 pounds. After he woke up and got checked out, the bear was relocated to an area a bit more bear appropriate. And finally, we'd like to say thank you to the thousands of parents and kids who came out this year for the West Metro Family Fire Muster. We hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did. You know, it takes hundreds of volunteers and our great sponsors to help us put it on every year. We hope to see you next September for the 28th annual West Metro Family Fire Muster. And that's just a quick look at some of the things that are going on here around West Metro. For more information on the fire district or to get safety tips for home or work, visit our website, westmetrofire.org. And for breaking news and information, follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.